For us, what a county line is, is a, it's a drug dealing telephone number that inherently sits out of our county, so mostly in London, Liverpool, um, Manchester, Wolverhampton, somewhere like that. The, the end user down here, so the drug addict, will ring a county line. County line will then use a different phone, phone into his drug runner in the city, and then those two will connect. So the, the runner and the drug user will never exchange phone numbers. Since 2015, we've seen a marked rise in young people being sent to Brighton to deal drugs, a marked rise. The children are usually referred to as clean skinned. It basically means a child that's never come into police contact and is not known to police, so police wouldn't be aware of them and looking out for them. For somebody to move a child, even by buying them a train ticket from London to Brighton, is trafficking that child. My team could run an operation around 65 days a year. It's daily, you know, the, the end users who are using crack and heroin, they need it daily. And so every time we run one of those operations, we probably come across 10, 12, 15 children in, in different circumstances that we pull out of that environment. They want to be wanted. They come from maybe poor areas within the centre of London or Liverpool or Birmingham. They may have fallen out of education. They may not have a real big friendship group. They see the attraction of and getting involved in these gangs and being wanted. I think they probably see the money that the drug dealers have. Drill music, you've probably seen. Gang related music, I would call it. It basically talks about stabbing people, shooting people. But you'll see there's always big wads of cash and talk about, you know, selling on the streets. They get offered a layer of protection initially. They get pulled into a, a, a cool place to be and just an identity, really. They're still victims, you know, they may not know they're victims, which I think is an important thing around certainly modern slavery and exploitation. You know, they might be given a nice pair of trainers worth a hundred pounds, but then they might have to work to pay off like a thousand pounds to pay those, you know, to pay that for that pair of trainers. So they don't see themselves as victims probably 99% of the time. I think it soon goes quite quickly wrong for them because they end up coming to places like Brighton, get put into homes of drug users, so really poor, unclean houses, rooms where they're asked to sleep, cook drugs up and then get out and sell them all hours of the night. They could be beaten, they're forced to carry drugs, they're forced to hide drugs, they're forced to carry weapons to protect the commodity and the cash and going out and meeting those end users of that, that commodity. So really put themselves in a, you know, in a, in a dangerous position. We ran an operation on the back of two young 15 year olds being stabbed by drug users. They're desperate and so, you know, if they see an opportunity, they're going to take it. You know, these are well established criminal gangs, but they don't care about the kids. They don't care about the kids. They're expendable commodities at the end of the day. There's, there's always somebody else to fill that gap. They will use threats, you know, um, around their family, their friends. They take away their money. They take away their personal phones. They've got no contact with the outside world apart from that contact with that drug line, that controlling line. You know, they get sent down to places like Brighton with drugs. They get picked up with drugs by the police. The police will take the drugs away, do the safeguarding around those kids, but they ultimately end up with a drug debt to the drug dealer. Those debts never really go away, they only increase in value. So it's a very difficult circle to kind of break out from. If people see children involved in drug dealing, definitely they should call the police. I would even say call 999, because that intervention needs to happen. We need to take that child out of that situation as fast as we can. These kids who are committing this, you know, they are somebody's child. Uh, you know, a mother or a father whose son, who's, who's maybe his behaviour has changed, has come back with a nice pair of trainers or has been given a, a new phone. Especially if they haven't got that kind of money, they haven't got a job. Making the authorities aware, whether it be a school teacher, doctor or anybody, those early indicators will help us hopefully get in there before they get involved too far you know, within this, this kind of criminality. We all need to support one another to get the right results. The arrest is the first stage in their safeguarding. It's the first point we can take them away from what's going on and we can give them another pathway. We identified that there was drug dealing going on down Boundary Passage in Hove. We identified it to be a young female from the London area and she had got herself into a little bit of financial debt and had been asked to, to firstly courier drugs down 
uh, and then once she was trusted to pay off her debt, she was asked to then deal those drugs. So the Metropolitan Police run a scheme called Rescue and Response, which is a really good scheme. We've used it so many times, so if we arrest a child down here for drug dealing, we call this Rescue and Response and somebody from a charity will come and pick them up. Because she lived in London, we got the Salvation Army come down and collect her, we offered her support to get her into the right agencies. Uh, we got her back into education. Um, she started a college course, got into boxing, uh, and became a boxer stroke trainer. So those kind of positive interventions, you know, they, they are few and far between, but they do happen. And you can see, you know, it's a real kind of success story for us, really. Whether it's cannabis, powder cocaine, crack heroin, Exploitation sits at the end of every one of those drugs, you know. Somebody's had to traffic that from somewhere. Don't ever start holding drugs for anybody else. Don't ever, ever start selling drugs for anybody else. Even if it's just your mates, even if you've got a contact that can get three ecstasy tablets and you get one for each of your friends, that's still a drug supply and you need to think about that. Serious consequences. If you notice a change in any of your friends in particular, they've become sort of less communicative, got a new phone, burner phone is a thing to look out for. Just pick up on those signs and if you're, you know, at school, university, just report that in. Because early intervention is really important, it starts to break in that cycle.